Have you ever wondered how chewing gum is made? Well, before we jump into the nitty-gritty of the manufacturing process, let's take a step back in time to explore the intriguing history of this popular pastime. Chewing gum, as we know it today, might seem like a modern invention. But did you know its history dates back thousands of years? Ancient civilizations were the first to discover the joy of chomping on various substances. The Greeks, for instance, loved to chew mastiche, a resin obtained from the bark of the mastic tree. This early form of gum was believed to freshen breath and clean teeth. Across the ocean, Mayans were not to be left behind. They found pleasure in chicle, a natural latex product. It was quite the rage, chewed for enjoyment and to stave off hunger. Similarly, Native Americans had their own version, using the sap from spruce trees. As we move forward to the 19th century, we see the first commercialization of gum. A chap named Thomas Adams was given a chunk of chicle by the former Mexican president, Antonio Lopez de Santa Anna. Adams initially tried to use the chicle to produce rubber, but when that didn't pan out, he turned it into chewing gum. And voila, Adams' New York chewing gum went on sale in 1871, marking the beginning of the chewing gum industry. From these humble beginnings, chewing gum has evolved into a multi-billion dollar global industry. It's journeyed from tree resin to chicle to the synthetic gums we see today. Along the way, it's been shaped by different cultures, innovations and even political events. So the next time you pop a piece of gum into your mouth, take a moment to appreciate the long and fascinating history behind that simple, chewy delight. Now that we know a bit about the history of chewing gum, let's delve into how it's actually made. At its core, chewing gum is made from four main ingredients. Let's start with the gum base. This is the non-nutritive, non-digestible, water-insoluble component that gives chewing gum its basic structure, the chewiness, if you will. The gum base is made up of polymers, plasticizers and resins. Now you might be thinking, hold on a minute, did he just say plastic? Well, yes and no. While it's true that some of these compounds can be found in plastic, they're also in a lot of other things we consume every day. It's these components that give gum its elastic properties, allowing it to stretch and bounce back without breaking. Next up are sweeteners. These are what give your gum that initial burst of sweetness when you first pop it in your mouth. There's a whole host of sweeteners that can be used, from natural sugars like cane sugar or beet sugar, to artificial sweeteners like aspartame or sorbitol. The type and quantity of sweetener used can greatly affect the overall taste and texture of the gum. Now, on to flavorings. These are what give your gum its distinct taste. Mint, fruit, cinnamon, spearmint, the list goes on. Flavorings can be natural, derived from plants or fruits, or they can be artificially created in a lab. The flavors are usually added in the form of oils, and they're what keep you chewing long after the sweeteners have been used up. And finally, we have softeners. These are added to keep the gum from becoming too hard or too sticky. They work by coating the gum base and preventing it from drying out. Common softeners include vegetable oil derivatives like glycerin or lecithin. So there you have it, the four main ingredients of chewing gum. The gum base, sweeteners, flavorings and softeners. Each plays a crucial role in creating that little piece of chewy delight that we all know and love. With these ingredients in mind, we can now explore the process of making chewing gum. The process of making chewing gum starts with heating the gum base. This gum base that forms the backbone of our chewy delight is typically a blend of synthetic materials. These materials are selected for their ability to remain chewable and flexible for a long time, a characteristic that is, of course, crucial for a good piece of chewing gum. To kickstart the process, the gum base is placed in a large steam-heated mixer. Then, under the watchful eyes of experienced gum makers, it's heated until it reaches a dough-like consistency. It's quite a fascinating sight, akin to the making of bread, albeit with a twist. Once the gum base is at the right consistency, it's time to add the sweeteners. These can range from sugar to corn syrup, and even artificial sweeteners for those calorie-conscious gum enthusiasts. The sweeteners are more than just a source of sweetness, they also add volume to the gum, making it easier to chew. Next in line are the flavorings, the magic ingredients that transform a plain piece of gum into a burst of mint, fruit, 
or any other flavor you can think of. These flavorings are carefully selected and blended to create a unique taste experience that lasts as long as the gum is chewed. To ensure that the gum doesn't harden over time, softeners are added to the mix. These substances, like vegetable oil derivatives, help maintain the gum's soft and chewable texture even after it's been stored for a while. Once all these ingredients are in the mixer, they're stirred together until they reach a uniform consistency. It's a bit like making a cake, where all the ingredients need to be thoroughly mixed to create the perfect end product. With that, we have the basic gum mixture, a sticky, sweet and flavorful mass that's ready to be transformed into the chewing gum we all know and love. The mixture is then ready for the next stage of the process. After the mixture is prepared, it's time for the shaping process. Our journey into the making of chewing gum now takes us into the fascinating world of shaping and hardening. This stage is where the magic truly happens. We have our gum base, sweeteners and flavorings all mixed together into a sticky, elastic mass. Now, it's time to turn this mass into the familiar forms we all know and love. The gum mixture undergoes a process known as rolling. This is not your ordinary rolling, mind you. The gum is passed through a series of rollers, each one reducing the thickness of the gum sheet. It's a process that requires precision and consistency, as the thickness of the gum can affect not only its texture, but also its taste. As the gum is rolled thinner and thinner, it begins to resemble the finished product we're all familiar with. But we're not quite there yet. The rolled out gum now needs to be cut into the desired shape. For stick gum, the sheet is cut into small rectangles. For bubble gum, the sheet is cut into small circles. The shape of the gum plays a critical role in the chewing experience. Stick gum, for instance, is designed to be easy to chew and less likely to stick to your teeth. Bubble gum, on the other hand, is designed to be able to inflate into a bubble, hence the round shape. After the gum is cut into the desired shape, it's not ready to be popped into your mouth just yet. The gum needs to be cooled to harden its shape. This cooling process also helps to prolong the shelf life of the gum, ensuring that it remains fresh and chewy for a longer period. And there you have it. From a sticky mass of gum base, sweeteners and flavorings, we now have perfectly shaped pieces of chewing gum, ready to be wrapped up and enjoyed by millions around the world. Now the gum is almost ready for packaging. The final step in the process is packaging and distribution. After the gum has been shaped, cooled and given its final flavor, it's time to dress it up for the shelves. Each piece of gum is delicately wrapped in a special foil to maintain its freshness. The foil serves as a barrier, protecting the gum from external elements and ensuring that the flavor you love stays locked in until you're ready to unwrap it. Following the foil wrapping, the gum pieces are then packaged into their iconic boxes or blister packs. These not only make the gum easy to carry around, but also provide another layer of protection. It's during this stage that the gum gets its final look, the one you see when you walk down the candy aisle in the supermarket. But the journey doesn't end at the packaging stage. From the packaging line, the gum is boxed up and prepared for distribution. Now imagine thousands of boxes of chewing gum ready to bring a burst of flavor to mouths all around the world. These boxes are loaded onto trucks, ships and planes making their way to stores on every continent. Getting the gum from the factory to your local store is a logistical marvel. It involves careful planning and coordination to ensure that the gum arrives in perfect condition, ready for you to enjoy. This is where the unsung heroes of the gum world come in, the distributors. These are the folks who ensure your favorite chewing gum is always available, whenever and wherever you want it. Before the gum hits the shelves though, it goes through rigorous quality control. This step ensures that every piece of gum is up to standard. It checks for consistency in flavor, texture and packaging. Only the best make it to the shelves, ensuring that each piece of gum you unwrap is as perfect as the last. And that, my friends, is how chewing gum is made from start to finish. So, to summarize the process of making chewing gum, it all begins with the heating and mixing of the main ingredients. This includes the gum base, which gives the gum its chewy texture, sweeteners for that delightful taste, 
and flavourings to give it its distinctive identity. Then we move to the shaping of the gum, transforming the mixture into the familiar sticks, balls or whatever shape tickles your fancy. After shaping, the gum is cooled to solidify and maintain its form. The final steps involve packaging the gum into colourful wrappers and boxes, ready to be shipped off to stores around the globe. This intricate process of heating, mixing, shaping, cooling, packaging and distributing is what brings that small, flavourful delight to your mouth. Next time you pop a piece of gum in your mouth, remember the fascinating process it went through to reach you. Until next time, keep chewing and stay curious.